Hey guys, welcome to Workflow My Workload. I am your guide, Justin Razio, and today we'll be looking at how to create a correct Gantt chart within Smartsheet, how to set it up for success. And before we dive in um, into that real quick, if you haven't already, um, please subscribe. M more importantly than that, um, please sign up for the free online lesson I've created for you guys. It's in the link below in the bio. It's a free lesson of 40 minutes of pure Smartsheet content. So if you don't know anything about Smartsheet or you've purchased Smartsheet but you don't really know your way around it yet, uh, please sign up for that free lesson I've created specifically for you guys and um, it answers uh, the questions that people ask me about the most. All right, let's take a look at creating a Gantt chart successfully within your Smartsheet. All right guys, let's get started. In order to create a Gantt chart, we're gonna click on the plus sign here, and we're already in that screen, and we're gonna go ahead and click on project. Now, really fast, if you wanna create a Gantt chart completely from scratch, I don't recommend it, but you can do it. I'm gonna show you really fast. Click on grid, we'll say Gantt chart. Call this ABC. And you just simply go here and click Gantt View. Um, when you click on this, it's gonna give you a warning saying, hey, you need at least two dates. So we'll say task one, turn this into a date, call this start, and we'll call this end. Put in some dates. save and now we can turn this into a Gantt chart but then you also have to put in your prede predecessors and your duration and things like that so it's too cumbersome so a very much efficient much quicker way of doing it is I don't want to save that we'll go to project and then we'll call this Gantt chart we'll say X, Y, Z. All right. See, it's already in Gantt chart view and it already has the pre-built duration, start, finish, predecessor, uh, so on and so forth. And if you don't know what these are, that's totally fine. We're gonna go through that today. So first things first, we're gonna give this um, some tasks because the whole reason for a Gantt chart is to map out how a project is doing and if we're on, on track or if we're off track, so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna use construction for the example today. So we're gonna say uh, a couple of different scopes of work. We'll say concrete. Again, this is very, very basic. Wouldn't like be like this in real life. I'm gonna keep it very, very simple. Then we'll do some lumber. We'll do some plumbing. And we'll do some interior. All right. And I'm gonna throw some stuff in below here. And I'm just right clicking here in the row to do that. And we'll say foundation. I'm gonna hit this button here to indent it. And when I do a little box appears. So this is what we call a parent row and a child row right here. We'll call this the walls. Call this insulation. All right, maybe I want to add a few more in here just to give you guys a better idea. Do one more in each. All right, we'll say footings. Bear with me here, almost done. So let's just do couches. 
Okay. All right. So now we got our tasks and to make this a little more visibly appealing and really just to um, keep this simple for you guys, I'm going to color code this really fast. So it's easier to keep track, highlight, hold down the shift button, click down on the arrow key a few times. We'll go like that. We'll make this guy yellow. And I wanted to build this out from scratch so you guys can see how it's done. A lot of times there's videos out there that are really good videos, but the data is already put in. And a lot of people struggle at first even knowing how to put the data and where to put the data and how to put it in. All right. And there we go. Okay, so now we have our tasks. And we want the concrete done first before we do put up the walls. And we want the... Before we do the plumbing, what the walls put up, and um, bef after uh, the plumbing's done, then we want to do uh, so on and so forth. We want to do the interior, the couches, insulation, the paint. Add that in here for kicks. All right, and so we want to see how the progress is going. So duration, uh, we'll say the foundation takes, uh, we'll say it takes three days. So you, all you do is put in the number three, and I'll make a little D appears. And this actually represents it takes three days. And uh, we'll give it a start date. We'll say we'll start this Monday. And immediately it automatically populates everything for us. We know that we're starting on Monday. And the system knows we put in three days. So it automatically adds three days to Monday. So 16, 17, 18, three days. And as I'm putting in more days and dates in here, look at the total, how it sums it up for us. Say maybe the footings take four days. And we start that right after the 18th. So we'll start on the 19th. And say this only takes two days. The last day is the 24th. So we'll start on the 25th. Now see how it summed everything for us right here? It's also showing us here in this graph, and this is called a Gantt chart. And the dark colors are always going to be the summary. That's why I made them dark colors. So it's easier for you to see that. This is going to be the summary of the Gantt chart of this specific scope of work, concrete. This is the whole length right here. And not only is it giving us the dates here, but it's giving us the dates here. It sums everything up for us. And say we want to connect these, these, uh, this graph here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll start on the second one. You have to start on the second one. And this gets a little confusing for some people to make it very simple. All you're going to be simply putting in is the number of the row you want it to connect to. So for instance, right now we're highlighted in row number three. And we go all the way to row number three. It keeps going. This is still considered row number three. We want it to connect to the row above it, row number two. So we're going to go here in row number three and we're going to just simply put in the number two. Click enter. And when I click enter, watch what happens right here in the Gantt chart. It connects it. And say we want row number four, still number row number four. We want to connect it to row number three. Well, we're going to put in a three right here. Click enter, and it connects it. And what's really cool in Smartsheet is with this Gantt chart, you can actually drag and drop the actual bar. And if it's connected, it will move everything else automatically. So we shifted it down the calendar a little bit and it automatically updated the dates in here as well. It's pretty cool. You can also, um, what I simply call click and snap, where in maybe you want this scope of work to connect to this scope of work. So you just click and you can get a little tricky here. Let me click it again with the arrow. So when you get the crosshairs, that's how you get the arrow. And maybe you want to connect it to this guy right here. But it's kind of ugly, so I'm going to undo it. And before I do, so it shows right here, it's connecting the row number three and row number two. So let's undo that. All right, so you can also actually give this bar a color. So you right click, actual bar, color settings. Let's do orange. Let's do that for all three of these. Okay, and you can actually 
click on the actual uh, bar itself, click edit, and you can make edits in this view as well. I usually don't like using this view, some people do. Um, this is where you can add attachments, mm -hmm. you can add pictures, uh, so on and so forth. And it's the exact same thing as adding pictures here in the row and comments, dialogue, and reminders. But uh, we won't go over that today. Those are in other videos that I've created for you guys. And uh, really fast, you can also assign people to this. And you can put in new people. Maybe it's Steve at concrete.com. And it will... Uh, Anyway, you can add in people in here. And then you can have completion times. Let's say it's 34% complete. This is 80% complete, and this is only 12% complete. Well, it gives, you, it gives you the average right here. It gives you the average right here. Uh, the status, that won't change the Gantt chart. That's just for visual purposes. And you can also add in your comments. And as you notice, when I put in the percentages, look at here, it shows how far, how much completed this bar is for that scope of work. And that is the basics of creating a Gantt chart. So you got your tasks, the duration, how long it takes, you have your start, your end date, your predecessor, what's connected before. And as you're moving stuff around here, it will automatically add all this stuff up for you. All right, guys, that is it. God bless and take care.